I now call upon the Provost, Professor Mark Considine, to introduce Susan Oliver, who has kindly agreed to deliver the occasional address today. Today, the university welcomes Susan Oliver as our guest speaker. Susan is a successful ASX company director and technology investor with experience in infrastructure, engineering, and property and investment. Before joining boards, she had a career in technology and futures consulting, culminating with the important role of managing director of the Australian government's Commission for the Future in the early 1990s. Susan is a graduate of the University of Melbourne with a degree of Bachelor of Building in Quantity Surveying, and she's passionate about a range of not-for-profit causes. She currently chairs the Wheeler Centre and is a member of the Board of Directors for the Melbourne Theatre Company. Susan also helped found The Big Issue in Australia and has co-founded Scale Investors to fund female startups. Please join me in welcoming Susan Oliver. Thank you, Provost. To everybody here, congratulations on successfully completing your degree. It is a very significant occasion and I'm very proud to have the opportunity to share it with you. Now, why am I talking to you? As the Provost said, I was exactly where you were, but 45 years ago, graduating with what was then known as the Bachelor of Building. I was the only woman to have started and then to complete the course. I was also a country girl, very, very new to city life, and the first person in my family to achieve a degree at a university. The diverse skills and experience I have gained from the course have taken me to some very exciting and unpredictable directions. I've been able to carve out a career using the technical skills that I learnt in the, in the course in technology, in business, in construction, in land and building economics, but also the broader principles of environmental sustainability and social welfare. In the brief time I have available to you, I won't try and repeat what the Provost has said in the introduction, but I'll give you a few highlights from my career, which I think may inspire you, at least that's my hope. My work in housing and building involved a stint as a manager in what was then called the Housing Commission, which was a government department, and I became embroiled in urban renewal and managed the Emerald Hill Pro um, Urban Renewal Project in South Melbourne. In 1990, I headed up what was called the Commission for the Future, and what was important there was I published a magazine, appeared on television and on radio in that weird pre-social media era that I'm sure you can't imagine. I led the team which developed the concept for Federation Square, and in 1995, I was appointed as a non-executive director on the board of Trans Urban to build the City Link here in Melbourne. And in that, I became one of the early pioneers of women on boards, and that began my career in corporate governance. Things snowballed after that. I've been a chair of the boards of a fashion retailer, a volume home builder, a global student accommodation business, and I'm on the, on the investment committee. In fact, I am the independent member of the, independ, of the investment committee for industry international funds managers, which is one of the globally significant investors in and owners of major in, infrastructure such as ports, roads, and airports all around the world. I sit on the advisory board for Fisherman's Bend, where redevelopment of 500 hectares of land adjoining the Melbourne city must meet critical challenges such as affordable housing and sustainability. My work with early computing at Melbourne University gave me the confidence to lead a strategic business unit in technology consulting, and today I have my own technology product and startup. 
The experience of being the only woman in my course and trying and fighting sometimes to find my way in a male-dominated industry where bullying, sexual harassment and discrimination were rife became a major theme in my career. At that time in the faculty, I received support from women lecturers, Elizabeth Coldicutt, Helen Tippett and Blanche Mertz. I was, and followed their lead to mentor other women through their careers. Six years ago, I was one of the founders of Scale Investors, which the Provost has mentioned, and we're an angel investing network where we invest in startups where a woman is in the leadership team. And with only 2% of all of the funding going to early stage through to venture capital ventures, actually going to women, we've got a bit of a margin to make up. I've also explored some of my wider interests and the Provost has mentioned the Wheeler Centre and the Melbourne Theatre Company. There have been some unexpected reward, rewards along the way. I was offered a British, British Council scholarship at Oxford University. In 2001, I received a Prime Minister's Medal for Services to Business. And this year, I was awarded an Order of Australia for Services to Business and Women. So I'm going to finish up. Already there's too many eyes in this presentation, and I apologize to you about that. But I'm going to give you four more eyes, which have worked well for me and can hopefully work in anchoring your careers. Innovation. Your design skills and knowledge of the built environment give you a unique and wonderful opportunity to reimagine, rethink, and redesign where we live, work, and socialize to meet the challenges of a sustainable future. And there's no time to lose. Integrity. At the end of the day, you must be yourself. Never lose sight of who you are, what is meaningful to you and meets your values, and have the courage to put it on show so others can be inspired. Intelligence. Use it. Develop it. Respect it in others. We'll need to be very intelligent to solve our social and environmental issues. And infinite. This is an infinite invitation to look beyond the short term. Think long term or infinitely, as Simon Sinek urges in his book, The Infinite Game. Life is infinite, and we are simply the finite players within it, he says. We can live our lives with a finite mindset, accumulating wealth and power, or we can live a life of service so that those who come after us can benefit from the work we've done. It's a thought-provoking and worthwhile perspective. On that note, I'll conclude and wish you all the very best for the adventure ahead.